What's going on everybody? So today what I have for you is my SKS with its Tapco stock. So what we're looking at is a Russian Tula SKS. Uh, this guy was produced in roughly 1951. 762 by 39 in the USA Tapco stock. So I'll go over it real quick, just uh, the SKS in general as well as the, uh, the Tapco stock and we'll decide whether or not it's worth it or not. So for reference purposes, um, I bought this gun in the configuration as you see it. I bought it already in the Tapco stock uh, from a store. What they were doing is when they import SKSs into Canada, they come into big crates. Uh, um, and on occasion, uh, SKSs do get damaged to the point where, from what I was told with this specific one, the rear stock was actually had a big crack to it and you could almost just snap it right off. So what they're doing is rather than just scrapping a perfectly good gun, they're taking all the guns that have damaged parts, more specifically stocks, and they're putting them either in Tapco stocks or in these refinished uh, laminate wood stocks. They look really nice, actually, the wood ones. Now, with these ones, the one you see here is the base model. The, they do come in different configurations. Uh, you can get them in black, uh, flat dark earth, or OD green. You can get them with a top and an underside rail. This one is just the flat bottom. Uh, and you can also get them with or without the bayonet. Uh, I opted without the bayonet. I don't really... It's not a big thing for me. I'm not, I'm not interested in using a bayonet at any point. Um, one thing I will tell you is this is definitely uh, a good deer gun uh, for those of you who hunt. Um, if you don't hunt and you don't like it, that, that's fine. I respect that. Um, a lot of people like to use SKSs for hunting because the round it uses, the 7.62x39, uh, hollow point ammunition has the same ballistics as uh, a 30.30. And a 30.30 is plenty, plenty good for hunting deer. So, it does have a benefit as a hunting gun. Now, going over the SKS itself, um, it is chambered in 7.62x39. Uh, the barrel, I believe, don't quote me on this, is somewhere close to 20 inches. Uh, may, maybe less. I, I haven't really measured it. Uh, it is a chrome line barrel. So you do have the option, or you do have the, the nice part of a chrome line barrel. Uh, it uses a long stroke gas piston. Uh, similar idea to that of the AK-47, but not exactly. Uh, the piston rides up in here in the gas tube and strikes a secondary piston, which in turn strikes a bolt carrier cycling the firearm. So it is a piston gun. Um, very clean, very, very reliable. Um, SKSs are known primarily for two things. One is their price. Generally speaking, you can get them for, in base models, you can get them for under $200. Um, and the reliability. I mean, these guns are a lot like an AK-47. They don't care what you do to them. Like, you can, you don't lubricate it, don't clean it, it'll, it'll work. Now, rule of thumb goes with any gun. If you take care of it, it will take care of you. That's just the way it is. Um, moving on, uh, more with the SKS, uh, it's a very simple gun. There's not a whole lot of components to it. It's very easy to take apart and clean. Um, it's the, like, there's really not a whole lot to it, which is very nice to have, uh, a firearm such as this. Now in the configuration that I bought it, I paid $350 for it. Now mind you, it's $350 out the door. That's like taxes included. It was $350. Um, guns like this, what they're doing, like I said, is because they're coming in damage, they're putting them in these stocks, all they're doing is just marking them up, say, $100. So, again, rather than scrap a perfectly good firearm, you're getting a gun already in an, a Tapco stock, which was my plan to begin with when I decided to purchase an SKS. Perch. Purchase an SKS. Um, now, keeping in mind, I'll go over the quality a bit, the stock is an excellent quality. It's a very sturdy, like, that's got no play to it. The grip has, like, no play to it. Uh, the magazine does have a little bit. It's not a lot, but there is just a tiny bit of play in it. Um, gas tube, zero play. It's, it's all a very tight fit. When they fit these, they do a very good job at making sure they're solid. So the Tapco stock, in my opinion, it's a great idea. A downfall of the Tapco stock specifically is the magazines. Um, now, I don't know if this is because of the magazines or the gun, but... I'll show you guys here. Bolt must be open to insert or remove magazine. 
So even if you still have a loaded mag in the gun, let's say the gun's still loaded and you just want to top it off, like drop, let's say you fired, I don't know, 12 out of your 20. Um, now mind you, in Canada, they only hold five, just keep that in mind. But let's say it's a full 20 round magazine. You fire 12 of your 20, you want to just dump that mag and load it, that way you have 21 in the new gun. You can't do that. You can't, uh, you can't chamber around and then insert a magazine. Like right now, as you see the bolts open, I can't take that magazine out. Like it, it won't, it won't come out. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> I'm lying to you. While the bolts open, it will come out. If this is closed, this magazine will not insert, nor will it come out. Like it's, it's stuck in there. So you can only, um, remove magazines or unload this weapon when the action's open. If it's, if it's closed, like it's still cocked and locked, um, it won't, you can't get the magazines in or out. I find that to be a big downfall, you know. Now, mind you, this isn't a go-to-war gun. This isn't something I would... Now, mind you, I could trust my life with it, but it's not something I'm going to run to my gun safe and grab if SHTF, right? So, in, a, in that sense... Now, mind you, SHTF, this is probably one of the guns that will be around the longest, simply because it's reliability and simplicity, as well as its uh, ammunition availability. I mean, like... I bought a thousand rounds of this. I'm now on my my two thousand rounds. So so far, speaking of reliability, I actually touch on that real quick. Using I've only used this type of ammo, um, as well as a little bit of Barnewell. This is Dominion seven six two by thirty nine still still case lacquer coated, uh, non corrosive. One hundred and twenty three grain projectile uh, FMJ. Um, I fired a thousand rounds through this gun. Uh, I suffered one malfunction, which was a stovepipe. Now, for those of you who don't know what a stovepipe is, it's basically that. Except just with a, a casing. It didn't quite get out of the gun. Not all that concerned. So reliability, the gun's fantastic. Uh, now, if we go into the gun itself, some of the features, um, it it is a very simple gun. You know, it doesn't have a bolt release or a bolt stop. Well, it does have a bolt stop, but you got to kind of reach up into the magwell to hit it. It's a very, it's designed to be very foolproof. The safety itself is very simple. It's right here. You got to flick that up. Now the gun's on safe. All it does is prevent the trigger from being pulled. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't disable the firing pin or block the firing pin, anything like that. It strictly just prevents the trigger from moving. It is a very stiff safety. Like it, you can see, it's very stiff. Now, mind you, I don't use it very often. I, you know, this is my safety. Uh, charging the weapon, very simple. You just load your, your magazine, pull back, let it go. This also operates as your forward assist in the event you have a malfunction. I've never had to do that, like I said, it's an SKS. So, very reliable. Uh, on the top of this one, it's got just the standard AK sights. Front post. You do have a rail here if you want to mount optics or anything like that. I don't... I'm not... Ugh, I'm not going to put optics on an SKS. I mean, like, the cartridge itself, generally speaking, its max effective range is 300 yards. Now, somebody's going to chime in and say, well, you can shoot further than that. Well, you could, but I mean, effective range is what I'm talking about. You know, you get past 300 yards, the bullets damn near going to fall out of the sky. It's not... It's not the best cartridge. The bullet itself, 762 by 39 it's a very hard-hitting round, but it's not the most effective round in terms of range, or accuracy for that matter. I'm sure if you get some higher quality ammunition like Hornady or something, Hornady Match, you could probably tighten up your groups, but in general, the 762 by 39 was a round designed to just spray and destroy pretty much anything it hits. Lots of stopping power to it. So, that's the round itself. Um, now, people will ask... Why buy an SKS? I mean, you know, you'll hear this, oh, well, it's just a cheap piece of shit. You know, it's a cheap Russian or cheap Chinese or Bulgarian or whatever. And the truth is, is it's a cheap method to shoot. You know, if you're on a budget, you, you could buy probably, I'm going to think here, 3, 6, 9, 12, 10. Yeah, so I could buy five of these for the price of what I bought my base AR-15 for. So, I mean, let's say I didn't want an AR-15. I could buy five of these. I could buy one in black, one in green, one in tan, one with the bayonet, one with the underside rail. For the price of an, my, my AR-15. Now, there are cheaper ARs out there. I know that. So, 
It, it's it's a cheap method to shoot, and I mean, even this ammo, this non-corrosive Dominion stuff, is 250 bucks shipped uh, per case, and that's non that, that's like non-corrosive. That's this is actually half decent ammo. If you get something like the Russian corrosive stuff, you can get 2,200 rounds for 160, 170 dollars. I mean, the stuff's dirt cheap. So that that's the, that's the nice thing with 762 by 39 is you can shoot a lot of it. It's cheap. You know, it comes in all different variations. There are numerous firearms and firearms manufacturers out there that ha that work with the 762 by 39 because it's so popular. Hence the SKS. It's extremely popular. It's a good, reliable, easy gun. And it's fun to shoot. You know, you ever get somebody... Uh, this is the gun I primarily use for new shooters. Anytime I, I bring a friend out or something like that, they want to shoot, I give them the SKS. It's It's very simple, very easy and fun to shoot. That's that's just the way it is. It's also got the adjustable stock, which helps out a lot. Very nice, very nice setup, very nice gun. Those of you who don't own an SKS, uh, why? I mean, they're awesome guns, there's no reason not to own it. Um, now one thing, other thing I'll show you is just real quick, I'm going to show you guys the trigger, so let's see if I can... Safety's off. So there's a little. Does have some creep to it. It's not. It's not unbearably heavy. It's not a heavy trigger, but it's not necessarily the best trigger. Now I'll set the camera down. I'll show you guys the reset. Sorry about that. Long reset. It is tactile. It's not so much audible, but you can feel it reset. Not a bad trigger. It's definitely lighter than an AR-15 trigger. Definitely lighter. So that's the gun. Um, oh, actually, I'll show you right now. So you see how the bolt's closed? <laughs> Magazine won't go in. <clears throat> You can't get the magazine in on a, a closed bolt. So upsides and downsides. Upsides, uh, it's extremely cheap. If you don't own one, go buy one because there's no reason not to own one. Uh, ammunition's cheap. Uh, it's very plentiful. The guns themselves are plentiful too. You, you can usually find them anywhere. Um, another upside, especially if you buy them in my, the configuration that I did, it's already in the Tapco stock. You can get it with the accessories should you so choose. Massive upside, especially still considering the price. Um, Reliability is definitely an upside. Now, downsides. Um, I can only really think of two downsides to this type of system. Uh, one is the magazines. Uh, more specifically, just getting in and out. Uh, kind of annoying, but I mean, you can live with that. Issue number two is the weight. Uh, I've fired many SKSs since I've started shooting. I find these are heavier in this configuration. They are heavier than uh, just a standard, like, laminate stock uh, SKS. My opinion. Some people might disagree with me, and that's fine. But that's the gun. I mean, they're fantastic guns. There's no reason not to own one. Regardless of how you buy it. If you buy it either like this, you get the 20-round magazines if you live in a, a non-restricted country or state. Or you can use just 10-round stripper clips. You can still use stripper clips in this, by the way, because it still has the uh, the slot for it. Awesome gun, though. So if I had to say anything about these, uh, buy one. Buy two. I'm probably going to end up buying one or two more at some point or another. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you all next time.